Hi, welcome to this DCP Web Blender 3D logo tutorial. So in the fourth part of this tutorial, we're going to continue with our logo design in Blender and we're going to look at version 3 that we created last time. And right now I'm in orthographic view, so I'm just going to press number 5 to go into perspective view. And we created this logo so far, we, and in our last tutorial, we added a particle effect. So if I click the play button here, we can see all these particles flying out from the logo. After and we're going to animate this later to complete the full logo design. But in this tutorial, I want you to focus on adding some effects to the actual logo itself. Some, some sort of uh, some nice effects that we can add to the particles and the logo itself. So to do this, we're going to go to this little option down the side here. And we're currently we're in 3D view, but we want to select Node Editor. So we're going to click on Node Editor, and we want to select this second option here. We want to see the node tree, so we select on this option here, and then we're going to say use nodes, and we're going to say backdrop, and also auto render. So these are the options that we're going to have here selected, and what we need to do is press F12 to render. Let's just render at one frame, so we'll press F12 and we can press escape to go back into the node editor and what we have here is is the rendered layers so this is what the current render looks like and we have a composite this is what the final render will be and we need to add some more elements to this so let's click on this little yellow well, let's click on this uh, this yellow one here and we're just going to remove it so we're just going to drag it away from the composite and that will detach them and we're going to press shift A and we're going to select output and viewer here so we want to be able to view what work we're doing on in this actual window that's what this view is going to, going to do and then we want to press shift A again and we want to insert a filter and let's just work out what type of filter we want to use let's uh let's let's try out let's insert a so we're going to press shift a to insert and we're going to insert um let's insert a glare filter so here we have a glare filter so we'll connect the image to the glare filter, we connect the glare filter to the viewer, and we connect the image here of the glare to the composite as well. So it sounds all a bit strange, but in effect, what we're doing is this is our rendered image, what we can see here. We're connecting it to a filter here, and then we're telling it that we want to see the actual work in the background here but we also want it to be rendered in the final image here so with that selected we want to set the glare to high we'll set the iterations to let's say five uh, we're going to set the offset angle to around 10 and let's set the streaks to 5 and the mix volume uh, value we're going to set that to 1 and we'll set our threshold all the way down to 0 0.1 now you can see this effect that's been applied to the logo it's like this light effect we can call it so I'll zoom in you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out on these uh, 
these nodes here. So I'll zoom into this one a bit closer so you can see it. Let's just drag it down a bit here. We'll leave it around here somewhere. So we'll set the type to streak. We'll set it to high. The iteration is set to five. The color mix, the color mode. We can in fact increase this a bit. Let's set it to about halfway. Let's set it to about five. That will do. When you're changing these options, you've told it to auto render. So you see up here, it's performing the render. So if you see a slight delay, it's because it's trying to render what you've asked it to do. So it takes a few seconds to um, complete this this update. So I think we're pretty good here with the settings of what I wanted to achieve with the flare and the, the, the glare here. But let's see if we on this this green line down here, we're going to right click on it and we're going to scrub through to around frame 30. And then what we'll do is we'll press F12 and we'll see some of our particles as well. And now you can see we've got like this uh, this sort of star effect on our particles now, this glare. And it's just making our logo look a bit more pleasant, let's say. So all of these particles are going to have this effect applied to them, including the logo itself. So we can go back to our node editor here and you can play around with these settings. So you can change the offset angle, you can change the number of streaks. So I'll set it to five, but you could increase that. And if you notice when I set it to 10, it says compositing up here. So it's performing the action that I've just done. So it takes a few seconds and now you can see more streaks coming out of the objects. But I've kind of set mine to a, a lower amount. I'm going to set mine to around five. Here. I don't want so many streaks. Yep, something like that. And the, the threshold is, is uh, quite sensitive. So even if you go up a little bit, it's going to make a big difference. You can see uh, from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, it's, it's going to be a huge difference. So you need to play around with the threshold quite carefully to get the effect that you want. This is looking a bit too bright, washed out. So I've left it at 0 0.1 basically. So those are the settings that we're going to apply to our rendered image and each frame will get this effect applied to it when we render out the final scene. So hopefully you think that looks a bit better. There's a couple of other things that I want to do before we finish this part of the tutorial. So we're going to just go back into the 3D view here and what we want to do in our render settings, we're going to start setting this up for rendering. So let's click on this little camera icon, the render icon, and it's rendering at 1920 by 1080. So if your settings are not at 1920 by 1080, you should update these settings and we should increase the size of the image that's going to be rendered at the end. Right now it was set to 50%, so it's going to be half this size, but we want to set it to 100%. And also in performance, we want to make sure that the tiles are set to 64 and the resolution, start resolution is set to 64. You may have other settings in here in your performance, so you want to increase these to get a better image at the end, the, the final image. So just, just make note of those settings and update those settings, and we should be good to render. Now if we if we press F12 now, we'll see it's going to render a much larger image, a full scale image, and we'll get better clarity and a cleaner image for our final video sequence or animation sequence we're going to create in the next tutorial. If we just wait for that to render, you can see it's rendering at the moment at the top here in progress. It will take a few seconds to do and now we can see that final image what it might look like with all the particles flying remember these are going to be moving objects and the logo is going to be moving as well so that's going to look quite nice so that concludes this part of the tutorial we added some effects to our logo and in the next tutorial we're actually going to start animating the logo 
and animating the camera and then we'll create the final um, animation sequence and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.